So I'm actually uh, a, I'm actually trained as a computer scientist, and uh, I'll be uh, my uh, specialty is, as Susan said, ontology and the semantic web. You know, conceptual modeling, try to uh, integrate data together and represent data using uh, standard representations. So I, over the past five years, I've been trying to apply these technologies to um, our medical and clinical research. Um, I joined UT uh, last summer, actually only like four months ago. And before that, I was at Mayo Clinic working on uh, EHR data normalization. So I will be talking about you know, uh, how to apply these technologies first to clinical data and also a little bit um, uh, to the biomedical data. Um, so uh, first of all, I would like to have a, a very short um, you know, introduction about the technologies I'm using. What are ontologies and the semantic web? Um, so a little bit history about the semantic web in case you're not familiar with it. Um, the current world web we are using the, the, um, you know, was co-invented by Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And uh, his original vision of the web was actually quite more uh, ambitious than what we are having now. So here I, I quoted from one of his paper. Um, they, in their original vision, they, they think the web, the internet, should be machine readable, machine understandable. So basically, you know, we can rely on computer programs to do a lot, a lot of tasks automatically. But currently, what we have, basically, you know, we can browse the internet, right? We can read the documents, uh, click the links, but um, a lot of tasks we have to do by ourselves. So you know, about like uh, 13 years ago, they published a paper in uh, Scientific American, and they proposed the idea about the semantic web. So basically, you know, the vision about semantic web is you know every piece of information is semantically indexed, so that a computer program can interpret or understand the the data online better, and uh, you know we can rely. An automatic system to perform a lot of tasks, such as you know, like to schedule uh, uh, our plan, you know, like flight tickets for us, or make appointments for us, you know, find the specific piece of information for us. Like if I'm looking for a car, you know, I I I was you know have an option to have a computer program to compare the price and find the perfect car for me. And in the biomedical domain, you know, we could also. Uh, uh, have more intelligent queries to search for patients that are eligible for a certain criteria, or you know, for, for search uh, specific you know drug gene um, relations, things like that. Um, so a little bit over about you know the World Wide Web we have now. So here is the structure. So it can actually be viewed as a web of documents. So we have a lot of information online, but they are organized by documents. We have, you know, textual documents, images, music files, you know, videos, audios, and each document has a DOI, right? But now, let's what just said, you know, now the we now the um, you know on the data level, but on the doc document level, right? So like we can locate a wide, uh, a, a specific document by a URI or URL, but and also they are uh, linked together by uh, by hyperlinks. So if we want to look for something, currently we'll go to a search engine such as Google, right? And we'll have to guess, you know, the best keywords that, you know, hopefully f uh, represent our question well. And for example, I'm interested in this gene called CDK4, right? So I uh, went ahead and I put CDK4 there. And Google actually returned me more than 600,000 links. So in order to find the information I'm looking for, I will still have to click the link one by one, read through the documents until I'm, I, I, I found my, the information I'm looking for. Um, now to mention this you know, keyword can, uh, based on search, this kind of keyword based searching can be ambiguous, right? As, as why I said, um, natural language by itself is ambiguous. So sometimes it's really hard for us to find the right keywords. So sometimes this process can be very time consuming and painful. Um, and also, you know, like uh, here I want to show you like this link. So this CDK4 actually stands for 
concepts and design addition four, which has nothing to do with this gene, right? So because, you know, as I said, it's ambiguous. So we want to find a better way to solve this problem. <coughs> so what is the problem? Basically, this is a typical web page we have, right? It's about a conference and, uh, um, you know, it has all kinds of information. And it's represented in HTML, which is a markup language. So what computer, you know, can parse automatically from HTML is the rendering information, right? Like the font size, the color, and the hyperlinks. But other than that, the semantics represented in the page is actually prepared for us, not for computer programs. Um, so this is what we can see. We saw the rendering uh, information. We can still um, understand what this page present to us, right? Like conference, how to register, where the conference are, and what the focus of the conference. But this is what a machine can see. Without uh, semantics, a computer program can only see, you know, wield them as a bunch of symbols, right? Because they don't, they don't understand the semantics behind the text, right? Like you and I can talk because we speak English, we understand English, but if I put like another language, if you don't understand it, it's just a bunch of simple to you guys, right? So one solution is we need to add semantics. We need to formally define the semantics so a computer program can understand the semantics of the data so that they can, you know, do something automatically for us. They can, you know, conduct like automatic search for ours or even more. And uh, um, our, our solution is to have a domain ontology to define the semantics for a specific domain. And the term ontology was actually borrowed from philosophy. So in philosophy, uh, ontology refers to the nature of being, existence, or reality in general, as well as the basic categories of being and their relations. So, you know, very high level. But um, I, I believe it was, this term was adopted by the, you know, computer science and information technology in the 70s. And here we use the term ontology to, reform, to, to refer a formal representation of you know, the knowledge of a specific domain. And the ontology usually includes you know, a bunch of concepts involved in that domain, relations you know, be among these concepts, and constraints for the relations. So using an ontology, you know, we, we use computer formal language to define the ontology so that, you know, we have uh, pathers or reasoners on top of the ontology to help computer system to do automatically reasoning, to help computer system to understand better. Uh, so I'll give you a very uh, simple example. For example, you know, like <coughs> in ontology, usually we define hierarchical information, like classifications. Like if we can define a, a father class, right? Father concept is a subclass of a parent uh, class, so that we know a father must be a parent, right? Uh, we can even, you know, define what a father means, what the term father means, right? We can say a father must be a man, you know, whose gender is male and who has at least one child, right? So later on, if we have an instance coming, like, like say, Hua, right? He, we know he, he's a man, has three daughters, right? So we can automatically infer that, your know, computer system can infer that he's a father and he's a parent, right? So this is just one very simple example, but in the biomedical domain, we have you know, ontologies like that, or we, we're working on ontologies like that, so that you know, we can formally define like you know, the treatment of a drug or you know, relations between genes and proteins, so we can do some kind of semantic query and reasoning. Um, and also, you know, at least some of the uh, uh, you know, usage of ontology. First of all, as I said, to de formally describe a domain, and we can do reasoning and also <coughs> consistent checking because we can also add other constraints like you know cardinality constraints, right? So if we define that you know like uh, a person can only has at most one spouse, we can do that, right? Um, okay, so you know I I, I I want to have some you know um, uh, I want to apply these technologies to clinical information uh, informatics research. So as you know our previous uh, speakers already focused, uh, already talk about, you know, like uh, we, the EACR data is very big and complex. Um, 
um, a, a, a data about one patient could be scattered in different you know house health organizations. Even within one hospital, you know, the data for one patient could be you know stored in different database or registries, represented in different formats or or, or you know you know like semi structured or unstructured or or structured right or you know in different semantics sometimes different hospitals could use different coding systems um, and so uh, interoperability is certainly a, a challenge and um, I'll be working on you know like uh, using ontology technologies to normalize EHR data so you know uh, like the meaningful use uh, uh, use <coughs> regulation um, has uh, requirements for hospitals to use standard terminologies to mark their data and uh, you know we, we need to do semantic annotation we need to do normalization so this is you know what I have been working on and also as uh, Susan mentioned that you know, there are like uh, quality measures for EHR data right and uh, these measures we uh, they, they are not actually automatically executable over the EHR data so um, what I have uh, one another project I'm working on is, you know, how to represent those uh, meaningful measure algorithms using computer rules with respect to these ontologies. Remember, the, you know, the, the EH, we are trying to represent EHR data with respect to ontologies, and if we can also, you know, use the ontology to represent the quality measures, then we can apply those um, um, algorithms automatically to our EHR data to retrieve the patient data automatically. Um, and another uh, project I'm working on is, you know, remember, you know, we have a lot of data and uh, I'm trying to sort like patient's data over the timeline. So basically, you know, if we have a patient with very complex history, he, his data could be, you know, again, scattered around in many places. So, you know, if we could have a system that can automatically extract the important clinical events and their temporal constraints and their temporal relations, then, you know, we could actually sort the uh, um, temporal, uh, their clinical events on the timeline. So this can uh, save physicians time to review uh, their patient's um, history. And if we have a, a lot of patients that, um, that are you know for the same conditions or use the same drug, we can also use our tool to um, you know kind of find the temporal um, trend um, and uh, do some um, like a, uh, a disease progress studies or you know predict for future events. Um, so also you know I'm trying to use the same technology on biomedical data. So in in this domain like PubMed, uh, PubMed there are a lot of you know. Uh, publications about you know like uh, genes or SNPs or protein or you know disease adverse events and there are also a lot of databases about the, this uh, information so we're trying to use uh, uh, ontology technology to bring them together to integrate them together so one uh, particular advantage we want to use this is you know we uh, we um, ontology can be actually <coughs> real as a, a a graph so basically it's very flexible for us to link everything together and you know not like a relation database if the uh, um, the table schema is settled it's very hard to add new columns right but here you know since everything is linked together as you see as a graph so basically we can uh, just append new information to this graph when we do when we want to merge more information together. Okay, so I think I'm out of time, but um, so here just kind of a summary. So basically, we want to use ontology and semantic web technologies to, for conceptual modeling, for, for doing, you know, more intelligent queries, and for uh, infer, inferring new knowledge um, um, for, for a specific domain.